Hi guys and welcome Lemon here. In our first video about Scarpet, you guys gave me tons of support and good feedback about the project and today we are continuing with it with a small but very handy cinematic camera package. There are a bunch of new things about Scarpet and Carpet Mode in general, for example now it's available also on the Fabric platform, meaning that Carpet Mode is now available for what's newest at Moyang, which is great. Scarpet also got some improvements and now can load programs directly from world files rather than pasting them through command blocks. I mean, you can still do that, which is especially convenient if it's a server and you may be OP but don't have access to world files, but editing your code with some syntax highlighting and without the need of using the stupid dollar signs to indicate new lines is just glorious. On top of that, each program that you run operates on its own namespace, meaning that they don't share functions and global variables, at least not yet, but this means that they can function independently without programmers stepping on each other's toes, which is good. To load or reload the program from world files, you need to put your programs in a scripts folder in the world files into a file with sc extension, and the name of the file becomes the name of the package, so that's important. When you load the package to run in that namespace using run, invoke, and all other things, you just need to precede the command with script in package name and then run, invoke, or globals, for example. The cool thing about packages is that you don't need to use a script command to access their public content. Like in this case, to start a camera path, we can just type script in a camera path invoke start. But if a package has implemented special methods, and we'll see them in a moment, and the command of that package name is not taken, it gets converted to a new command with all the public functions to those that don't start with an underscore exposed as options for that command. So let's quickly look at the camera program and what it does. If we just type the command itself, we can get a helpful info about available options. Don't worry right now that I'm missing here the command as slash camera. In this case, it's a camera path module, so that's the command but it'll be apparent in a moment why it's slash camera in this case. So with that command, we can start a path, add points to the path, change our interpolation method. Right now, it's only two options really, but since it's not a mod, it's just a scarpet program, you can just add to it really easily if you want. We can repeat existing set of points on the path and loop it n times. We can also change the speed of the path and rather the number of intermediate points between each checkpoint with the speed command and we can play the path with a player to our smooth cinematic recording. We can also display the path visually uh, so we can see how it looks and finally we can run this command here through a repeating command block to show our path continuously. So let's say we want to make a quaint fly by around this village here. We would start from an overview perspective, let's say from about here. You can type uh, camera path start and as you can see our starting point got recorded. It's all done from the position of the player, including the position and angles. So for the next checkpoint, let's uh, turn around maybe here. Look from this angle, from this perspective. Now you can just say add point. You also need to specify number of steps you want to take from the previous point, so the start. The more points we add, the smoother the motion is going to be, but the longer it's going to take us to render it. However, this is not something that should worry us, uh, that's something that can be adjusted later. So I'll choose 400 points here. Let's uh, now maybe do a sweep to the bell jacuzzi, like so, like another 400 points. And just pan through a village, let's look at the farmers. Okay. And then just pan out and just take an overview of the village again. Another 400 points. So now if we do the show command, that would show us the path that will take. The default interpolation is linear, so just going from one point to another in a straight line, nothing fancy. So we can just play this one. As you can see, the transitions are rather harsh and not very pleasing, but we can change it how it looks by changing interpolation method. But before we do that, to see it better, instead of just one time uh, path display, we have another function that we can call to display the path tick by tick. And to access these functions, we can use the good old invoke. 
but in this case, since it's part of the package, our command is script in camera path invoke and then the function to invoke. These non-public functions are not part of the auto command, but still can be called and accessed via the regular means. So what this would do, it would keep displaying our path as long as we keep this command block powered. So it changed the interpolation method. At this point, I only implemented one more method, which is the Gaussian interpolation. We take these points that we just specified only as guidelines and tries to find a path that meanders smoothly between these points. The Gauss Auto will attempt to find automatically the deviation part of the Gaussian interpolator between these points, which in simple words means it will try to find a smooth path between them. Let's maybe play it along. As we can see, it gets much nicer transitions. And also because of that, we have pretty much missed the hot tub part because we have only skimmed through it. In the manual Gaussian mode, we can actually change our set of parameters. The smaller it gets, the sharper the turns are gonna be. So let's choose maybe 200, uh, maybe 180. And let's play it. Now, as you can see, it takes much sharper turns. So it changed something else, for example, with 120, for example, that will give even more sharper stops and tight camera movements which might be useful for some dramatic shots type of applications. Obviously this program or plugin, I don't know, will not replace things like a replay mode in terms of the convenience of setting up path and redoing the same scene on and on again on the replay recording, but we'll probably need to wait quite a bit of time until replay mode is updated to the current version of the game, while this works as long as Scarpet and its API is updated to the current version of the game. Let's look at some other controls. Let's say we want to circle the camera around the town a few times while we record the players building something or fighting off the raid or something similar. For that, we can define four points to define a circular path around the village, like I did so here. Then you would want to repeat the current path, let's say 10 times. So we can use the command repeat at 10. And then like with add, we need to specify how many points should be between the last point of the loop into the beginning, so let's say 400. Okay, this way we have multiplied our path 10 times. So let's play it. Yeah, the, now the problem is that once we started the path, there's no way to stop it really, because we didn't code it in. But at least what we can do is to stop all current programs with script stop, like so. And so once we are ready to resume, just script resume. It's very handy in case we mess something up with the scripts, we can always just stop everything down. And as you can see, our path got cancelled as well. For time lapse, we don't need to play it back at 60 FPS though. 60 FPS means that for every tick, which is 20 times a second, we need to find a time to display three frames, meaning that the tick itself cannot be longer than 16 milliseconds, which is a stretch in 114. But if you run into 20, it means that we will be getting 20 FPS footage, but the game will have always 50 milliseconds to finish each tick and will be just displaying one frame between the ticks. Because here we perform all the game stuff and deal with the player position all from the server side. So no client side is involved. So we have to keep it in mind, but 20 should be plenty for a speed up for sure. In this case, we could even slow the path down a little so that the time lapse takes actually more time. So for that, let's change, for example, the density of the path with our speed command, let's say three times more points. And as we are informed, now our path is over 50,000 points. So 20 points per second, that's with 72,000 uh, is in one hour. So that's more than 40 minutes of footage. So let's turn off the command block. And then now we can run the path, turn off all the overlay. And that's how our camera viewpoint would look like. So now let's look quickly at the code. As you can see, we start here with the underscore underscore command function that not only displays the info, but also tells the game the message trying to convert the script into a command, if it's possible. 
So Scarpet will protect built-in commands, so if there is a command like that already, it won't mask anything. But if it does work, it will add these public functions here as subcommands. Our first function is a start, which takes the current location of the player, which is essentially a 5 vector of x, y, and z coordinates and your pitch. So if you check the globals, for example, for camera path, let's extract the first point. Element global points zero. As you can see, it's a quintuple with the chords. A rotation your, so the angle and your rotation pitch. So how we look up and down. We also store what kind of point is this, so sharp or smooth, although with the current limited options in terms of the interpolation this is unused, but you can imagine with more fancy methods you can define for each point if you want it to be sharp or if you want to have a smooth transition through it. And then we have our add point function that needs a distance to the previous point as argument. Situation is similar except we just need to adjust the yaw values because it'll roll around 360 degrees and you just don't want to make those waltz loops in case we just want to simply circle around something we need to scale it up the your component appropriately which we do here with a repeat command we are essentially grabbing all the current locations of all the checkpoints and just add all of those points n times again to the path with any manipulation done to the path we need to clean up the points cache we used to pre-calculate the path we need to take it's not that crucial for playing the path but more for visualization of the path where we need to be able to randomly draw a couple hundred of points per tick to display these particles. With speed command we just want to scale the duration part for each point by some constant ratio. It's pretty simple stuff. Now let's look at select interpolation method which will redefine a bunch of functions for us, allowing us to use generic functions like prepare path if needed or find position for point. And since all functions are global, if you redefine them inside other functions, it will have a global effect. In this case, we have here a note that interpolator either needs to define its own prepare path, which computes the entire path at once, or find a position for points, which take a segment, current segment that you're running, or the point ID, and then the point inside that segment and returns the position of a vector of that player for that particular point. In this case, both linear and Gaussian methods can work point by point, but I would imagine there might be some methods that need to compute the entire path at once. And for Gauss, in case user specifies its own deviation value, we can store it globally here as well. All variables that start with global underscore are global to the package. Now we have some static code. Uh, by default, when you load the module, it chooses a linear interpolation. We have to specify something. And here I'll have a caching block for the path points. As I mentioned, it's not that important for playing them back, but for visualization part, we need to be able to select a random set of points from the path on demand, so in the cache for that. In this case, the resetting the path cache means that we need to take the total number of points that we have in the path and just fill it all with nulls. Now the show command will display our red dust particles, 100 a tick for 100 gain ticks, so we can quickly glance over the path we currently have set it up. But you can just simply put that show path take to a command block and use our own particles and density to show current path continuously, as you have seen in the demo. The play sub command takes an FPS as an argument and then computes the current ticks per tick metric. So with 60 FPS, we have three frames or three ticks per one game tick. We then need to loop over all the segments and sections between those points, then iterate over all the points on that segment, and then for each point, we have to figure out where we should be in that point and modify a player's location according to that 5 vector. Now for 60 FPS, so every third tick we need to remember to run the game for one tick and then we need to sleep for the rest of the time. After that, before we spoil the recording with a done message, we just want to wait an extra one second for that's an indication that the entire path is done. For our path display command, is the same but different. In this case, we select a random segment and a random point in that segment and just display our particles on that point. To find a point in linear interpolation is very, very easy. You just need to get a beginning and the end vector for that particular line in question, find where that point is in terms of like the progression, and then the player position will be just a weighted sum of the end vector and the beginning vector of from that section. VA and VBs are not individual numbers, but they are vectors. Here are lists of numbers, but Scarpet Arithmetics conveniently works on vectors and arrays as well. 
finding position for ghosts is much more complex and we need to potentially average over a larger pool of points to get smoother transition. So that's pretty much it. I won't be getting into too much details, but in a sense, adding an extra interpolation method is as easy as defining a new function for a point for that new method and, and hook up to our select interpolation function up top. So that's the entire program responsible for driving our camera module. So here we have it guys, a very handy camera control program written in Scarpet that we can use inside Minecraft to control player view for these smooth cinematic shots. Since Scarpet runs server side, there are a couple of positives to this solution. It works regardless of what type of client you're running and because it's a Scarpet program, as long as it's kept up to date, all of these tools should work just fine in newer versions. And because I thought having camera tracing module is important, all of this what I showed here today comes actually bundled with carpet mode. So script load camera works without you needing to add any camera scripts to your world files. However, if you want to make it more fancy, bring more controls over each point to the path or implement new interpolation options, you can just create a new module, put it in your world folder and just load it from there. On the downside, the camera is controlled server side. If you have a poor connection, these action shots might not be as smooth as you would want and the usefulness of the camera program might be limited to time lapses only. Plus it's not a full replay mode functionality so you need to plan your shots in advance and don't have the ability to go back in time. Plus with the current way it's implemented only one player can render its path at a time. Although that could be easily changed with a different play function that doesn't manipulate the game text. All of this what you have seen today is available as a direct vanilla jar mod for Minecraft 1.13.2 but we have also 1.14 version of carpet mod we are currently working on you have seen today that uses fabric framework. Both projects are available on its own github pages where you can install and download each mod for stable 1.13 and not yet stable 1.14 version of the game. The code for the camera module can be found on the Scarpet program repository where you can view but also contribute your own Scarpet programs to share with others. So that will be it guys for today. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave me a like or leave me a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe if you are new and see you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.